last year was one of our most difficult years as a community. Um, I struggled writing this speech, and I went back and forth about what the message should be and the best way to celebrate this moment. And my mind just coming back to last, kept coming back to last year in our, pro, our program. I know that for me, during some of our darkest moments last year, I was directing You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And as I struggled to deal with what was happening in our community, a friend I met through Apple reminded me about the healing nature of art. Our last song was called Happiness. And that is what I struggled to create through art. And it was even my inspiration for this year. For me, Sea Rock City was a show about taking a chance to move forward. It was a story our community needed. And that is what art is. I noticed that when we have our darkest moments, the art students are the students that the district turns to to highlight and inspire healing. Last year, Ms. Brock helped uh, our student government to arrange for what became an iconic image, the iconic enough image that appeared in a number of publications across Westchester and online. You are the ones who created countless murals, including the sports mural, murals that are now on display on the bridge. And as newsletter after newsletter goes out, you are the program that is highlighted. In fact, during the walkout, a video produced by our film program was so moving that Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, played it during the launch of the newest iPad and the Everyone Can Create curriculum. There were four programs recognized globally, and New Rochelle Student Creativity was the central focus of one of the recognized four programs. You are those students and teachers that the district turns to when the narrative needs to change. And the change you create here does not just impact our community, your art, challenges the world at large. That said, today I want to advocate for you and hopefully inspire everyone in this room to become an advocate for the arts. Although arts is something that we are all proud of, it is also an area that is cut first when the topic switches from students to numbers. There are eight full-time art teachers at New Rochelle High School. Meanwhile, a department like mine, the English department, has 22 teachers. Years ago, when the budget cuts came, they made the choice to cut one teacher per department. But what is frequently overlooked is that when you lose an art teacher, we lose 12% of a department, while the English department loses less than 4%. And as teachers have been added back to the English department, the art program has yet to be uh, restored. We live in a world of technology, and when the fastest growing in industry is tech, how do these cuts affect us? Last year, we made the difficult decision to cut graphics too. Recently, our school debated over AP Art History, a class that is not only a requisite for art majors, but a widely, uh, a widely accepted arts distribution requirement at most colleges and universities. That means it is a guaranteed college credit, which translates into a financial benefit to incoming college freshmen. Department administrators debated about offering the class through the History Department, a popular class that was masterfully taught by amazing history teachers. This is why it is important to advocate, because although not finalized, the teachers of the art department work diligently and professionally, and if approved, the class will now be offered by the art department. Mm -hmm. These are the grave commitments our administrators must make, but these discussions are bigger than money or classes or credits, or even commitments. In 2010, Dr. K.H. Kim, professor of creativity and innovation at the College of William and Mary, identified what he called a creativity crisis. Over 1,500 CEOs were asked the top 10 skills needed in the workforce. They identified skills such as flexibility, creativity, communication, ability to work with others. Since the 1990s, however, schools have relied on high stakes testing to measure success including our own school. For many teachers, they are now percentages on spreadsheets, and teachers are judged on how many of their students can correctly fill in a scantron sheet. Kim, in his work, talks about how this mentality has killed deep thoughts and imagination, stifled risk-taking, destroyed collaboration, forced conformity, but most disturbingly, lowered expectations. This past Monday, I had the pleasure to lead a workshop on one of the most successful methods available for teachers, project-based learning, a philosophy that allows us 
not only to address this crisis in creativity and deliver content, but also teach the skills CEOs are looking for. Now, project-based learning is not just doing projects in class. That's what a lot of teachers thought it was. It's asked teachers to provide students with relevant experiences that result in public exhibition and shared community experience. When I look at our school, the best example of project-based learning is what is happening in our art classes. To create your art, not only do you apply your understanding of the world and even class content, you take a risk that many students do not, and you share your work with the community. I have no doubt that every administra administrator here and out there is committed to the arts, but as is the case across our country, budgeting for what we ultimately fund and cut is carried out in offices. Many times offices that exist in buildings where there are few to no students. I challenge our administration. The next time we are discussing budget cuts, as you cut, sit with our students in the classrooms that will be most affected by those cuts. Mm -hmm. Just like we are challenged to push the way we deliver content, embracing project-based learning and turning ownership of content over to students, I challenge our administration to challenge the way they approach the daily responsibility of administration. <laughs> Don't sit alone. Sit with us. Yeah. Sit with our students. As you make the budget consideration that affect these students, talk to them. There are bold solutions that take the commitment and creativity of a community, and together we can be stronger. You, the students, are what matter. You do so much for this district. You are the voice. You are the public face. You are not just creating art. You are learning the skills that will make you leaders of tomorrow. You are the people who tell our story. Demand the resources, the classes, and support that you need because you have earned it. You are remarkable young people, and you make a difference every day in the lives of this community. I want you to know that I see you. As I said at the beginning, the change you create here does not just impact our community, your art challenges the world at large. Art is the essence of being human. Before we spoke in words, we spoke in images. We spoke in art. As you join this amazing organization today, embrace that honor. But recognize, this is not just a bullet point on a resume. You are all here today because you have the ability to inspire, to move, and to change people. Go out today and create the change for those that will come after you. Congratulations to you all.